So you're interested in a smart switch. There are a ton of options out there and it can be really overwhelming. Uh, so we're going to break it down step by step, uh, give you a guide so that when you go to purchase, you know what you're looking for. Uh, first off, we want to know what we're controlling, whether that's a light, uh, some shades, a fan, a smart bulb. Uh, from there, we want to look at, you know, how do we want to control these devices? Uh, is it going to be by app, uh, voice? Uh, so looking for switches that are compatible that way. Then we kind of get into the protocol. Do you want it to be controlled over Wi-Fi or do you want to use like a hub? We've got a few of them hiding back here. Otherwise, uh, you also want to check the wiring in your house and make sure that you have the appropriate wiring for the different switch scenario. Uh, so we're going to dig into that. And then lastly is the overall tactile feel of the switch. And so do you like that clean flat look? Do you want uh, up is on, down is off? type of functionality, uh, that more clicky style. If you want a light that's indicating whether it's on or off, these are all just uh, finer things to think about when outfitting your home. Uh, so of course budget is appropriate, is important as well. Uh, so we have a variety of switches here today, uh, starting from some that are very affordable like the Amazon Basics or a Wise switch, at, all the way on up to like a $200 brilliant switch. Uh, and everything in between. Uh, so now we're going to break it out by category and talk about what you need to look for. All right, so if all you're going to control is a light, this is really simple. Over here on the left hand side, we've got switches from Wemo, Jasco, Amazon, Miras, TP Link, Treat Life, Wise. All of those are going to be uh, switches that you can install and just control lights. Uh, we'll get into wiring in a little bit. Uh, there may be some limitations for your setup, but if you want to control something else, let's say it's a smart bulb, then you're going to want to look for a switch that's compatible. Uh, so we have here like WISE. WISE can actually control the WISE bulbs as well as other WISE products uh, right through the switch. And then we've got Lutron, which the Pico remote can actually be programmed to control different things. And so I've kind of included this one as one that could control different devices. They do have a switch specifically made for fans. Uh, it's very important that you don't try to install one of these style uh, dimmers on a fan because fan actually uh, the motor will get burnt out if you're using a dimmer that's not compatible. So you want a fan uh, dimmer and that's going to have a neutral wire in there. Uh, so there we have another one here. This is specific for fan. Again, you're going to see fan right on the box. Uh, so if you're controlling a fan, make sure that it's compatible or you will run into issues. Uh, back to smart bulbs. C by GE again can only control C by GE smart bulbs. Uh, but the nice thing with some, a setup like that is that you can have constant power going to that bulb and then be able to do the control at the wall. So that way you, know, you get higher wife approval factor. If you have guests over, they can just use a switch at the wall and it functions the way that they think it would. Otherwise, what you would have happen is that they go to turn it off and now they've cut power to your smart bulb and now your smart bulb doesn't work. On the high end, we've got Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant is going to control smart bulbs. It's going to be able to control uh, your thermostat, uh, do music, you can see the doorbell, cameras, all sorts of stuff uh, for a bit of a premium price, of course. This is the two gang variety. Uh, so we've got two spots here and then we got the touch panel. And it actually can be set up to control other lights outside of just what it's connected to. Uh, so a nice, very advanced switch there. Um, once we get into something like uh, Zoos or Inavelli, uh, they have a lot of different things called scene control. Uh, so what you can do is have a double click uh, to turn things on, like different things, and set up different automations for that. Uh, you can use whatever hub you have. I think Hubitat is really great for this. Uh, you can do a lot of advanced things. Uh, Innovelli currently communicates over Z-Wave. Uh, they are actually going to be rolling out some Zigbee switches in the future, so that will be their blue line. Uh, but when we're looking at the Innovelli, we've got both the red series and the black series, uh, the both dimmers and standard switches. Uh, the standard switch is just going to be on-off whereas the dimmer has that dimmer capability, you'll see a larger bar, uh, LED indicator bar on the side. Uh, the red series is actually gonna allow us to do the different scene control, whereas the black series is just on off for that exact switch. Uh, so a lot of different uh, things you can do there. Zoos is just the same way. They've got their scene controller, and all the different buttons 
to control different things, as well as a regular switch that can be set up the same way. So holding it down, uh, double clicking, stuff like that. They've even got a little uh, remote so you can add that in different spots. And so those ones are gonna communicate via Z-Wave. So a little bit more advanced. Uh, LifeX actually has their own switch for controlling their bulbs. Uh, if you've got Philips Hue, sometimes you want to look at for those Friends of Hue products. Uh, this one is the Lutron Aora. It's actually going to go over where the switch was. Uh, so you can just set the switch to always on. Uh, and then this is going to be like a little button and dial. So very easy for people to use. Uh, Akara is something that we've tested recently. Uh, this one's got two buttons and so you can actually program them uh, to do different things. And that's going to work with HomeKit. So a large variety of different options here depending on your needs. Uh, if you're just controlling a light, again, you can go with some of these cheaper options. Or if you want to control smart bulbs, fans, or other things in your home and do scene control, definitely look into options like Zoos and Inavelli. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things you can do. So for those of you that don't want any hubs, uh, no hub required, these are the best ones. Make sure that you have a really strong Wi-Fi router um, so then they can get the signals to where they need to go. These also work with the voice assistants, both the Alexas and the uh, Googles. So this is what are the best options for you. Now for more scene control, for some, so, some more creativity, let's, let's say, these are the ones where you'd want to look at, right? So some of these have, have a lot more scene control, but again, these do have features that the ordinary uh, ones maybe don't have. And for the Apple HomeKit users, these are the best selections for you, right? These link right up to your Apple HomeKit, easy, easy, bingo, bango, lights turn on, fans turn on, fans turn off, lights turn off. That's what you're gonna to want to go with. The next thing you're gonna to want to do is look at the wiring in your wall. Uh, so there's two things we're looking for. First of all is, do you have a neutral wire? If you have an older home, it is possible that you don't have a neutral wire. It's gonna be a white bundle of wires. And so that's gonna be important for installing a lot of the different switches. If you don't have it, you're, don't worry, there are still options for you. You can use something from Lutron, which is a two wire setup, line and load. Otherwise, you can use something like uh, CYGE, which is now Sync. Uh, those have options available that work with just the two wire configuration. You can also use uh, something like a Inavelli dimmer. Uh, that's gonna pass through a little bit of power in order to work. You may have to use a little, there's a little add-on piece that you might have to use, but uh, it is an option for you. So if you wanna do some of those advanced automations, you can still do that even if you don't have the neutral wire. Uh, the next thing we wanna consider is how, how many switches there are. So. Uh, if it's a three-way configuration or a four-way or more uh, where you have multiple switches controlling the same sets of lights, then you're going to need to make sure to pick out a switch that's compatible. Uh, and this gets achieved in a number of different ways. So some of the switches, you're actually going to replace both ends. Others will work with the existing three-way switch. And some are going to replace uh, with a dummy on the other end. And so a good example is Lutron. What you'll do is you'll actually go to the, where the second position is and you're going to take those wires and actually tie them together and so it's going to pass the power right back uh, to the original switch and in its place you're going to put this Pico remote uh, and so the Pico is programmed wirelessly and has a battery in it that lasts about 10 years uh, and that's going to connect uh, to the switch directly. The nice thing is you can actually control, uh, program these Picos to control a number of different switches uh, so you can tie other switches together uh, and it is really convenient. Uh, but if you do have that neutral wire, you've got a lot more options to choose from. Uh, so a lot of these switches here, I have that white wire there. Uh, so <clears throat> a fan typically is definitely gonna require a neutral wire, uh, just so it has that extra load capacity. Uh, but when we have some of the switches, <clears throat> they're gonna be able to connect to just a third switch, or the second switch, uh, and use the traveler wire here and they're, they're going to be able to work with the dummy switch some of them are going to have like what's called an add-on switch and that goes into the extra spots and so the check the on the box and check the manufacturer's instructions for how to uh, set up those different switches uh, but just know that there are a variety of different options available uh, you might see some switches too that have you know dimmers built into them some are going to have uh, smart speakers i would stay away from the ones with the smart speakers i found that uh, 
you know, the sound quality is not there. They end up picking up things when you don't want them to. Uh, but there are a number of switches here that can actually control more than one device. And so uh, those ones are going to have two load wires coming out. Uh, so if you have one of those switch situations where you have like a fan and a switch in the same spot or you've got you know, one that controls like a plug or uh, two different lights, uh, you can actually uh, get that and achieve that in just one switch. And so a few different companies have options for that, but uh, something to look for too. Uh, and then if you're just wanting to control uh, different like smart bulbs, there's like an option from like RGB Genie where you put this on the wall. It's just a little micro remote and it actually fits in uh, to the gang box and uh, it's going to look like a regular switch. And so here's an example I have with a Wemo uh, switch next to a dimmer next to one of their uh, scene controllers. So this scene controller uh, can do a number of different things. But what I've done in a few spots in our house is I've added uh, the Lutron Pico and it's actually next to an existing set of switches and it looks like it's a part of the the box but in reality it's, it's just on the end there and so i've got one that's uh controlling uh, some shades and then i've got another one set up where it controls outside lights and so uh, that's a slick option that you can do there uh, so when you're looking at your wiring first look for that neutral wire and then look and see you know what are we connected to is it going to be a three gang uh, where we're controlling other uh, we're controlling the lights from other switches. Are you controlling multiple loads at once? Uh, and that's going to help you determine what kind of switch is going to be right for you. One of the most important features from picking out a switch is the look and the feel of it, right? Do you like ones that are really clicky, right? Do you like ones that have the little remote? Click, click. Do you like ones that have lights? to kind of show you where the lights are. Then you have some that are very soft, right? You can't even really hear them. These are all very important features to think about when you put them into your home, right? Style, the look and feel, the sleekness. Like this one has the little kind of braille-ish feeling to it where you can actually feel with your fingers that there is a button right there. And then you have ones like these that have indicators as to like what it is you're gonna be turning on. So this is lights on and off, and then you can dim them using these. So it's all depending on what you are wanting for your home, for your experience, turning lights on and off, turning fans on and off. It's all about how you want to experience that within your life. So as Colton mentioned, the tactile feel of the switch is really important. My wife and I actually have Lutron Caseta throughout our house. And I'm gonna be honest, uh, when we get up in the night and we try to reach for the switch, sometimes it's hard to know which one we're hitting because you know it's very smooth and flat. And so I actually prefer the tactile feel of like a Inavelli switch or a Zoos. Uh, and they do have the you know up is on, down is off functionality. Whereas some of the cheaper Wi-Fi switches, there's just one button and so it's kind of odd, you know, you would think to like try to touch up here to turn something on uh, and it doesn't, the clicker's down here, but that's really just nitpicking. And the other thing too is the LEDs, you know, if they're really bright, that could be annoying. Um, so next we're just going to talk about, you know, our recommendations for switches and what we would personally use in different scenarios. So if you're looking for a very basic Wi-Fi switch uh, that's going to be compatible with uh, three-way configurations, I do like the Amazon Basic Switch. They come in both regular switch and as well as a dimmer option. I also like TP-Link. It's got a variety of different um, switch styles. So this one's actually got the motion detector built in. Uh, they've got dimmers and just the standard switches. And again, these ones can work uh, in a three-way configuration. Uh, so that, those are a great, very affordable option and very reliable. Uh, Amazon's just gonna use their uh, their own app, the Alexa app. So if you're a Google user, maybe this isn't the best option for you. Uh, but TP-Link uses the Costa app, very easy to use, uh, very reliable. Just make sure if you're going with the Wi-Fi switch that you have a good, strong home network. Now, for those Apple HomeKit users, these are the best options for you, right? So we have the Wemo, uh, which is the smart dimmer, which is a fantastic um, addition to your uh, HomeKit. And then we have the Miras, a smart Wi-Fi switch, which is also a very slick one uh, and easily connected to your Apple HomeKit. 
And a lot of people are also going to like Lutron. And so Lutron is compatible with HomeKit as well. Uh, you do need the bridge. I recommend just getting the Pro Bridge. That way, if in the future, you want to connect to something like Hubitat, uh, you can do that. They have the Pico remote. Installation's easy, uh, only two wire. My only complaint about the Lutron is that I wish it had more of a tactile feel. It got a lot of buttons going on, so sometimes you might hit the wrong button. And uh, the thing is, if you, turn, if you have it dimmed down and you turn it off, when you turn it back on, it just goes to full brightness. I'd like to see it just go back to the previous setting. Now, for those of you that have smart bulbs and are wanting to control them, these are the best options. The Wise is by far the best bang for your buck. Unfortunately, it will only control wise light bulbs, so you kind of have to marry those two together. The Lefix one uh, will also control Lefix bulbs, um, but they have a lot more selection usually. And the Brilliant will do just about anything. This is probably one of the more high-end ones, um, and it has a lot more features. But if you're looking for that smart bulb control, if you want to turn your bulbs to red, to green, to yellow, uh, you know, whatever the sky is the limit, these are the best ones for you. Uh, what's interesting with the Lifex switch is that there's two buttons there but uh, it's not on and off but it's actually controls different scenes and so you can have it control that uh, switch that it's connected to the the load there or you can have it connect to different bulbs and you can do different scenes and so that's kind of cool it does have a weird tactile feel to it uh, when you touch it and the the it switch itself lights up and so that's kind of odd and i didn't really care for that myself uh, but if you have, you're wanting to control the LifeX bulbs, that is an option. Uh, some other things you could look at are going to be using like that Pico connected through um, Hubitat. It's more of an advanced option, but otherwise RGB Genie, uh, this uses uh, TouchLink, and so you can control Zigbee bulbs directly that way. Uh, really cool. Otherwise, the more advanced options are going to be in a valley and your zoos. Uh, so those are going to require a hub. Uh, but you can do that scene control, so you can have po constant power going uh, to a smart bulb, and then you can control that bulb, you can control other bulbs. Uh, the Wemo has that scene controller. Zoos has a little add-on switch controller too, which is kind of slick, so if you wanted to add different things to different places. Uh, we do use the Lutron Aora, uh, the dimmer style, uh, to control our, some of our hue bulbs that we have outside, and that's just kind of a dummy plate there. Uh, the power is going constantly. Uh, but if you do have a home hub, Jasco makes a great line of products. The green ones is going to be the Z-Wave. Uh, they've got red packaging. That's going to be Zigbee. Uh, so depending on which hub you have. Nice thing with Zigbee is uh, you can connect it directly to like an Echo Plus or if you have an Aero router, uh, that's got that Zigbee radio built right in. So you could go you're kind of hubless uh, and just connect it and control it right through the Amazon Alexa app. These are all the switches we've tested so far. Uh, I've personally installed every single one of these switches in my house. Uh, and honestly, you know, I really recommend just picking one platform and sticking with it. And so uh, don't get overwhelmed. Go room by room, you know, maybe figure out which one you like first and then keep adding to it. If you're going the Wi-Fi route, it's going to be really important that you have a strong router because you're adding a lot of devices. And if you exceed the capacity, they're going to start to drop off and you're going to become frustrated. Uh, if you're going to plan on doing more advanced things in the future, definitely check out Innovelli or Zoos. They've got awesome stuff that's going on there. Otherwise, if you're just looking for you know something quick, uh, Wi-Fi switch, just find one that looks nice. Um, and, and is going to work for you. Uh, so we hope that this has been really helpful for you guys. If you're interested and you want to know more about controlling smart bulbs, uh, you know, drop a comment in, in below. I'd be happy to go in more depth in a future video. Uh, we are going to be doing a smart bulb buyer's guide coming up, so stay tuned for that. Uh, until next time, take care. Bye.